Hello everyone, greetings to you. You're welcome to Prep Class TV. So if this is your first time coming across any of our videos, please kindly subscribe and uh, hit the notification bell so that uh, you'll be notified whenever we upload videos. So Prep Class TV is basically a YouTube channel that is dedicated to providing uh, verified and relevant information about traveling abroad for studies or for work. So stay tuned. On today's episode, we are going to be talking about traveling abroad for studies and uh, our destinating country is going to be Lithuania. It's going to be Lithuania, a country in uh, Eastern Europe, a country in the Baltics. So uh, the video is directed to Africans and other nationals, like maybe Indians or people from other countries who are looking forward to studying in Lithuania. So uh, on this video today, we are going to be talking in five phases. The first phase is going to be um, a general advice. Uh, second phase is uh, finding a school and applying. And I will recommend my own school to you. The third phase is the visa application process. Uh, the fourth phase is after visa application, which is obviously coming to Lithuania if the visa process was uh, successful. And also some things to, to, to do or to note when traveling over to Lithuania. And the last phase is applying for the temporary residence permit, which is actually the fundamental stage. So it's going to be a very long video. So stay tuned to the end. So it's actually been a while that I, I made videos about uh, traveling to Lithuania or in another aspect. I've been kind of busy with studies. So I'm kind of free now and decided to drop this uh, video for you. So starting with the first agenda on the list, we have the general advice. And this is particularly going to especially Africans who are looking forward to studying in Europe, whether in Lithuania or in other countries. Please, my brothers and sisters, the traveling process should be handled by you. First thing we should note is this. It is, it is expensive. It's costly. The expenses might vary depending on the country you're going to. Generally, it is expensive. You know, comparing the exchange rate of the currency over here, which is the euros, or maybe if you're going to America, the dollar, in respect to our own local currency back home, the exchange rate tends to be high and it tends to make the fees, the total cost to be very high at our local level. So in order to reduce the cost, I always encourage you to follow the process by yourself. Avoid these so-called traveling agencies or people who claim to be traveling agents or people who claim to have lived in those countries or people who claim to have been traveling a lot. Follow it on your own. Others have been doing so. They don't have four heads or they don't have multiple brains. They are humans like you. It only requires three things. I've made videos on this. Three things. One, you need a laptop or a desktop computer. Second, you need internet connection, a good one. And third, you need money because obviously traveling is about money. With these three things, you are good to go. You use your computer, desktop or laptop connected to an internet and then you search online. You do your search very well. The schools in the different countries in Europe or America or anywhere you are aiming to go, they have websites. They have websites in which they have, you know, displayed every vital information about the different programs that they offer at the different levels. Whether it's bachelor's, master's, or PhD, they have the programs listed in terms of the departments, in terms of the faculties, and also they have the fees, they have the admission requirements. All these things have been clearly listed on this website and do you know why they did this they did this for you who is looking forward to studying in their institution they want you to have a clear knowledge a clear idea about what you are going in for before you come over that's why they created their websites and trust me every year they ensure that they go through these websites to ensure updates and are, are made you know to make it more effective and clearer for you who is intending to study there they are doing it for you so why would you carry your money 
to pay to somebody who is claiming to be an agent or to have been traveling or to have been this and that to apply for you for what you don't need anybody most of you have this low self-esteem and that is what actually pushes you to want to believe in some people who claim to be traveling agents i see a lot of them creating facebook pages you know uh, making posts about visa successful rates like how they have been applying for visa on behalf of people and they have been all those things are marketing strategies to attract you to go to them to pay money trust me where do you think they get their information from it is still from those websites created by those schools something which you can also go through have your small jota or a pen and paper to take down the vital information you need with respect to what you are aiming to study so please to cut the cost which is already too high avoid spending extra on these people that's all i have for you it's up to you though so that is all i have for you as an advice so let's move to the next phase which is about finding a school so if you decide to take my advice then it's time for you to look for an institution to study abroad so this video is specifically made for people who may want to study in lithuania currently admissions are open for the next academic year which starts in august 2023 yeah so if you're looking forward to join me here in lithuania then this is the time you have between now or between the time you're watching this video till june june is actually like the deadline there's a certain date in june that you have as a deadline to submit your application so if you took the first advice about you following your traveling process by yourself then it simply requires that you go online and search for the schools in Lithuania. There are different schools. My school in particular is called uh, VMU, Vitautas Magnus University, and it is based in a city in Lithuania called Kaunas. Kaunas is actually the second largest city in Lithuania after the first, which is Vilnius, the capital. Now, Vitautas Magnus University offers a lot of programs at the bachelor's, master's, and PhD levels, depending on your level of study and they offer programs in different faculties and different disciplines you want to do something in the domain of it information technology or you want to do something in the domain of business or maybe agriculture or maybe uh, sciences you're welcome so i encourage you you go online and you just type vmu or vitautus magnus university to make things simple i'm going to drop the link of the uh, admission page of the institution on the description below so you can check on the description you will see the link there where if you click on it it will take you directly to the admission page of uh, Vitautos Magnus University where you will see the different programs at the different levels bachelor's master's PhD and then you can just apply from there directly so um, normally you know that uh, before you do that you need to be notified or be aware of the requirements in terms of documents which you need to submit and also the admission fees which you need to pay in the course of your applying for admission so on that link below when you click on it it will display all these requirements for you based on the kind of level you're going in for whether you're coming for bachelor's or master's or phd and also the admission fees the amount and also how you can pay for this fee so kindly check on the link and you will see that so to give you a brief view on how it's going to look like you need to take note of the documents which will be requested of you prepare them and scan them make sure they are in the soft copies clean and clear scans of each document so once they have been scanned you can keep them on a flash drive or you know some portable device and then for the admission fee i understand that uh, most of you are not very versed with credit card because uh, that is actually the fastest way of making the payment 
there might be other means but uh, credit card is actually the very fastest so in case you are not uh, in possession of one i can recommend you to use uh, an app on play store called bitseeker bitseeker is uh, an app that is used for money transactions and you can also use it to generate a uh, what we call virtual credit cards you know so it has an option of you generating a premium uh, card and a standard card the premium card can be used multiple times the standard card can be used just once so once you recharge it you just uh, use it and make a payment and uh, you can just go to play store download the app bitseeker as it is you uh, generate a virtual credit card depending on the one you want whether it's uh, the standard one or a premium card once you do that you can uh, recharge it by mtn or orange mobile money so if the uh, admission fee is for example 100 euros you need to check the equivalence of 100 euros in franc cfa then recharge that amount in your mobile money account then transfer it into your bit -seeker. it's very easy to do that you know and then use the uh, money in the basic card to generate a credit card, a virtual credit card, and then use it to just and pay. Simple as that. That's for those who don't have credit cards. You know, it makes the payment flawless and very fast. And the school tends to receive your application faster. You know, they only confirm your application after they receive your admission fee. So, I'm just giving you an alternative. So, guys, check out Pitsika on Play Store. Okay, so that's all for finding a school and uh, i recommend you to my school okay so moving to the next which is the visa process so if you have successfully identified the program you intend to study at whatever level whether it's bachelor's or master's based on your need and then you have identified the requirements in terms of documents that are needed and then you have compiled and scanned them and then you also have your admission fee ready then you simply just apply for admission by filling the necessary form online uploading these documents as requested and then paying your admission fee like i said check out pisica and uh, once you pay by credit card trust me your application goes like in a matter of minutes you know so the faster it goes the better so it usually takes within one month for the school to go through your application files to verify the authenticity the authenticity whether they're authentic or whether there are fake documents so i also urge you to avoid using fake documents because you will be traced if not at that moment but later on and it is more dangerous when you are traced at a later date trust me more dangerous so avoid fake documents so within this one month period the school is actually going to be reviewing your documents and if there is need for any further document they are going to contact you and request that you maybe send something or you know do something to update your file now most people may have gone through this and i just want to you know inform you in case you're planning to sometimes they can contact you after you've submitted admission uh, your admission files like after you've applied and it's in the course of review they can contact you that uh, you should contact your university this is for people who probably uh, are coming for masters it means you already have a bachelor's and you did it probably in Cameroon or if you're from Nigeria you know from your country where you are they can contact you to ask your university where you did your bachelor's to forward to them maybe a copy of your transcript or maybe a copy of your bachelor's so they want you to link them up with your university where you did bachelor's so they are going to be co communicating with your university okay that's one way of them identifying or verifying how authentic your documents are so expect those kind of things expect those kind of things so 
always be on the alert because when they reach out to you it is always important that you respond as fast as possible because they too are equally working and they are going to be fast based on how fast you respond to their request so be on the alert when you submit your files do not just relax and say i'm done with admission just be alerted that they might get to you to request for further documents and when it happens in case it happens please respond very fast you know time is of essence yeah very very important so if everything goes well within a period of one month they are equally going to offer you an admission and once that has been done they will send you an admission letter which will carry your name your uh the program you applied to study and the amount of tuition fee that is expected of you to pay it is just uh, an admission offer so you need to secure that offer and to secure that offer you need to pay your tuition fee it's just like in your normal schools in your respective countries you go for admission when you have been admit admitted you need to pay your fee before you go to class you need to pay your fee before you become a student of that school so your admission letter is going to carry the amount for that first year and possibly maybe the total amount for the duration of your study but normally you are expected to pay for the first year first then when you get over you can continue for your, on the rest so once you've gained uh, once you've received that mission letter the next thing for you to do is to start planning on how to pay your tuition fee so the same portal where you paid the admission fee is the same portal where you equally pay the tuition fee very important and uh, this one is going to be very huge because it's tuition fee but uh, generally the studies in terms of the tuition fees in Lithuania are kind of uh, reasonable and affordable as compared to other European countries. There are programs which have tuition fees reaching around 2,000 uh, euros per, per year, some have 3,000 euros per year, some have uh, 4,000 euros per year. You know, it depends on the program, it depends on the level as well. Okay, so that means once you have applied for admission, and you have not received any feedback it means your documents are actually in good process and you need to just get ready with your tuition fee so that when they respond to you back with an admission letter you just make your payment of your tuition fee so once the payment for tuition fee has been confirmed then you are officially a student of that school though you are not there yet and the only thing that will make you to get there is the visa and this is the phase that uh, is most troublesome for most international students now up to the visa process now you need to start compiling your documents to apply for visa to come and study in Lithuania so the first question you ask yourself is is there a Lithuanian embassy in my country the thing is Lithuanian embassies are very few around the world. Few in the sense that there are some continents which have very few embassies or few Lithuanian embassies. For example, Africa as a whole has just two Lithuanian embassies. One is in Egypt and one is in South Africa. You know, so that makes the situation very difficult for Africans who are looking forward to want to study in Lithuania. However, to bridge the distance problem, there is a body operating as a mediator between visa applicants and the Lithuanian embassies. And this body is called VFS Global. So VFS Global acts as, an, as a mediator between uh, the uh, 
visa applicants who are looking forward to traveling to Lithuania and a Lithuanian embassy. Meaning, if you are a visa applicant, you need to submit your documents for visa application to the VFS around you, and they will forward your application documents to the Lithuanian embassy. The embassy will review everything and then if it's approved that your documents are okay and you are fit to travel and everything is okay, they'll grant you the visa, then send your passport back to VFS and then VFS calls you to come and take your passport or possibly they will deliver it to you. It depends on the arrangement. That is how it works. That is how it works. So, VFS is present in uh, some countries, in most countries, I think. There is VFS in Egypt. I think there's VFS in Nigeria. There's VFS in South Africa. There's VFS in Dubai. There's VFS in Turkey. You know, so for Cameroonians, if you're looking forward to come over to Lithuania, it means you might have to look for the nearest VFS global office and then submit your documents through and then wait for approval. Now, what are these documents that you need to submit for visa application since you're coming in as a student? So, to apply for a visa as a student, it means you'll be applying for what is called a national visa or visa D. That is a name, a portion for student visa, call it national visa or visa D. And this visa is valid for one year. Now, what are these documents that you need? First, you need your passport. Your passport needs to be very valid, valid as valid as possible, and it should be clean. So if you are a careless person, who usually neglect your documents and some of them get stained like maybe some oil rubs your passport page or cover you're in trouble keep your documents jealously you need your passport secondly you need a passport photo you need a passport photograph this passport photo is what is going to be on your visa and it is a very important document as well. Important in the sense that it has certain dimensions that it needs to follow. I think it is 35 by 45 millimeters. 35 by 45 millimeters. That is the dimension of the passport photograph. So I recommend that you go to a very professional photographer and then show the passport requirement to the photographer that this is what you need. And it should be on a white background. It's a color photograph on a white background. Okay? In case you are not sure of maybe any professional photographer, the VFS office offers that service. They take such photos. Normally, you have to pay for it. All right? So, in case you want to, you want them to, to do it for you, then simply just go there without that one and tell them that you need to take that photo there. It's instant. They will take it for you. And then make it in that shape, in that dimension, and including your documents. They need just one. So you need passport one, passport photograph with that dimension, well respected too. The next thing you need is a mediation number. This document will come from your school, the school you are intending to apply or to study in. So normally they will issue this document to you. To show that you are one of their students and they would like you to come over to study this document carries a lot of information about you like the program you intend to study your personal information everything about you and also it will equally carry a statement to show that you have an accommodation ready for you yeah that you have an accommodation ready for you once you come over to study now, the school will not send the letter to you. No, they will not send the letter to you. They will instead send the number of the letter to you. So that's why I said you need the mediation number. So 
you contact your school and tell them when you intend to go for your visa application so that they will prepare the mediation letter and then forward the number of the mediation letter to you. The reason why you need to tell them when you intend to go for your visa application is because this mediation number is valid for 30 days. So they will not want to prepare it in advance. Meanwhile, you will be going very late for your admission and for your visa application. And it happens that the number is expired once you are undergoing a you know, visa application review. So if you're going for visa application, probably on the 1st of May, tell them and they will send it to you by 30th of April. They want to, they don't take chances. So they will send it like an email. The email will carry the number. So all you need to do is to print that email out. The email, just one page, right? And including in your documents, that's all. The email will normally carry the number and the number will be written on that paper which you've printed. That's it. The next document is your bank statement. Now, this one is kind of complicated because uh, most of us coming from Africa and other countries, we tend to use the bank statement of our relatives or maybe parents who are acting as our sponsors. Who are acting as our sponsors. So, the law in Lithuania now states that your minimum monthly expense should be at least half of the minimum monthly wage should be at least half of the minimum monthly wage so the minimum monthly wage as of 2023 in lithuania is 840 euros that's the minimum monthly wage so half of that amount is 420. so as a student that is what you're supposed to have minimum as a minimum amount you're supposed to have as a student to study in Lithuania. So if you're using uh, your sponsor's bank statement, that sponsor is supposed to have a lot of money in that account. A lot of money to show that he can take care of you and also take care of himself. Because he recalculated very well. 420 euros times 12 months. I don't know if you do the math you can see that it's around 5040 so your sponsors bank account should have around 15 or 10000 euros upward because he needs to also take care of himself he should have something far above that if he has just 5040 it means he's only taking care of you so he's going to die of hunger so they will reject your visa you need someone who is capable so they need the bank account to be heavy. And this is what you also need to know. The bank statement that is going to be requested should be for a six month period. Six months period. They want to see the movements of monies within that six months period. They are doing so because they, will, they understand that people will just carry a chunk of money and dump it to an account and then you know use it to do visa stuff so they want to see that account for a six month period to see how funds have been moving up and down take note take note of that and also if that person is actually your sponsor then your the person's bank statement should equally reflect how the person has been assisting you in the course of your visa application or in the course of your studies abroad like if the person paid for your admission fee it should reflect on the balances within that six months period if the person paid for your insurance it should reflect on the balances if the person paid for your tuition fee it should reflect on the balances those kind of things increases your chance it increases your chance to get that visa very fast but if they don't see such things, you know, a lot of doubts will be coming up. So if someone wants to act as a sponsor, the person should start from the beginning. And when the person starts doing it using his bank, you know, his his his, uh, his bank do transactions for you. And then later on, 
the bank statement of that person is requested, it will be very easy because they will completely believe that, yes, this person is actually your sponsor because he has been paying from day one your admission fee, your health insurance, your, I mean, he has been doing all those things for you to study abroad. So at least you see he's your or she's your sponsor, depending on the gender, you know. So also, this bank statement, since it's not yours, since it's that of your sponsor, it needs to come with an affidavit of support. The affidavit is just a confirmation to show that I, the sponsor, has decided to take care of you throughout your studies in Lithuania, and they need to be notarized. So, if your if your if your sponsor is another country, he's going to notarize the two documents, the affidavit and the bank statement, and then send them over to you by DHL or some other post. You take them and then go to the embassy or VFS Global to submit. And again, they need to be in English or in the Lithuanian language. Since uh, back in Africa, you will not know where to get Lithuanian language, so make it or make sure it is in English, the document, the affidavit and the bank statement. Make sure they are in English for easy understanding by the visa officials. Okay. With that one done, I think the next document is uh, health insurance. So you need to buy health insurance. This one is the easiest document. I mean, I advise that you buy it, even if you're in Africa or in India or wherever, buy it from a European insurance company. It will be best when you buy it from a Lithuanian insurance company. It will be, it will be the best. Because they can issue it in English or in the general language, no problem. You just submit it. The visa officials are Lithuanian. It is their language. You can still buy it in any European country, but make sure they issue it in English. Very important. So the idea is the documents that are going to the embassy of Lithuania should either be in the Lithuanian language or English language, or they can be mixed. Any of the two, but not in another strange language. It will be challenging for you. Okay? So, search for any Lithuanian insurance company online. There are many of them. There is Ergo, you know, many of them. Just go, you will see a list of them. Send them an email that you want to get an insurance for one year to specify the insurance, please, that you are an international student, you are in this country, now, maybe you're in Cameroon, you're in Nigeria, or Kenya, or Ghana, you want to study in Lithuania, so you need an international student insurance or international health insurance. International health insurance, that's the name, to study abroad. So they, they know all these things, so they, will, they are going to provide the, 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 the required one for you, and that's it. You are good to go. That's it. Then the, the next document is a uh, accommodation document this one this accommodation thing is not actually you you will not provide any document to show proof of it if you remember i mentioned accommodation in the mediation in the mediation letter number stuff so you are not going to provide anything about accommodation because the, the mediation uh, letter that was uh, provided by the school contains information about reserved accommodation for you so in fact in terms of document you are providing nothing for accommodation okay so that is it so don't worry about accommodation the mediation letter takes care of it automatically then the next one is a flight reservation a flight itinerary that will show the proposed date that you intend to travel from your country to Lithuania. Flight reservation is easy. Go to any flight company and reserve a flight. Within a one year interval, it should be to and fro. So, you can put a date and a date for departure and a date for return within a one year frame. Now, this is what you need to take note of. You, before you do that, you must know when your school intends to start. Okay? 
and if you know when your school intends to start, then your arrival date should be at least one week before the resumption date. So, assuming the, 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 the day you are watching this video, then seven days ahead is your resumption date. So, you should be landing on that day. Given that seven days, in, given that in seven days' time, your school resumes. It should be at least one week. So you can learn in uh, before, uh, you can learn in two weeks' time, or you can learn in three weeks. That would be too much. You can learn in 10 days' time. That That's very okay. I mean, one week is also okay because that's a period where you get to you know, know your way around the country, around your school, know where to go, know who, who to meet in terms of what, and get settled before resumption so when you know this then you can go now to a flight company to book for your flight uh, itinerary so they will do it and then they print it out and give you you attach with your documents very important so if you've booked it if you've booked the ap appropriate uh, flight departure date Make sure that the return date should be should fall within a, a one year period. A one year period. Okay, and then that's all for for that. Then the next one, which is also the most important among these, is uh, the visa application form. The visa application form. This one, oh my God, it is very serious. So this one is online, which you need to feel. You feel every detail. There are details there. There are parts of the form which may request for your personal information, parts which may request for your uh, your, your 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 passport passport data, parts that may request for who is sponsoring you and all that. Now the purpose of this form is to is is to match your your information, like the part for your sponsor for 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 for. Uh, funds like who is sponsoring you or if you are sponsoring yourself the information that you're going to fill on that part like if you're in case you're sponsored the information on that part should reflect the information on the bank statement so you cannot take mr a's bank statement carrying mr a's name and then on the visa application form it is mr b's name that is there you are automatically denied that's the first thing. The second thing that you also need to match, there's going to be a date for departure. Uh, uh, there's going to be a section for you to fill your traveling details on the visa application form. Now, they want to also see how that part of the traveling details matches with your flight itinerary. So if you book your flight itinerary, and you put the departure and return date make sure that the same departure and return date is on that visa application form don't put different things if you put different things you're out you are out so take note of these things make sure everything corresponds those are the small tricks that they use to nail you because they will see a lot of disparity the difference is too much i mean you are not consistent they want to see consistency because if it's actually true, then why differentiate everything? Take note of that. So I think uh, these are the documents that you need, which I've listed. You need the passport, the passport photograph, the medication number, the bank statement for six months, health insurance for one year, the accommodation, which is actually in the medication, so you don't need any document for that. Do you have the flight reservation and the visa application form? Okay, so all of these will be submitted physically then most of you will be asking but how do i get to submit these things how do i get an appointment that's also a big problem faced by a lot of you normally before you visit any vfs global office you need to book an appointment online and once you book that appointment you need to also print the appointment letter the appointment letter is going to carry the appointment date and time that you're supposed to be at the VFS office and when you get there you need to show that letter as proof to show that you actually booked the appointment and they will check the system to see if you actually booked the appointment see your name then they compare with the name of your passport before letting you in 
without an appointment, you cannot get access to the VFS office. Take note of that. Okay. So to book appointment, you simply need to just go to the VFS global website, depending on the office of the, the, the office where you're about to go to. If it's the office in Egypt, maybe it's the office in South Africa, book the appointment on the appropriate office you intend to go to. Very important. Also, if you have the visa application form that you fill, there'll be a section where you need to select the VFS office where you intend to visit for visa application. So if, you, if for example, you, you, you selected Egypt, if you selected Egypt, it means you will have to book appointment in the VFS Global in Egypt. For those who might want to go to Egypt, there are two VFS Globals there. There's one in the capital city, Cairo, and then there's another one in a city called Alexandria. So select the appropriate one, please. That's it for the booking of appointment. It's actually a very tedious process. However, I recommend that uh, you can get in touch with VFS Global on Twitter. They are on Twitter and very active on Twitter, through which you can ask them a lot of questions to clear any doubt that you may have, you know, give you clear explanations on what you need to do. Okay, so that's all for that. Now, if you have all this compiled and submitted, then you're good to go. You just need to wait for some time sometimes take days about 20 to 25 days for the result of your visa application to be out so you submit all these things and when all these things are submitted the only thing that returns back to you is your passport and uh, the process will be deemed successful if the passport comes back with the visa in it you know so you pray and hope that it favors you now, an update that has been made so far as the visa application process is, is concerned, this 2023 is the Immigration Department in Lithuania instituted that uh, people can actually apply either for visa or for temporary residence permit from abroad before coming to Lithuania. So you can actually apply for the temporary residence permit from your country through the VFS office before you, you come over to Lithuania. However, it all depends on you. But what I know is the requirements are going to vary a little bit. There are certain documents that might be needed for the residence permit that might not be needed for the visa. A good example is non-conviction or some kind of call it police report. You know, so that is actually needed for residence permit, but not needed for the visa. So if you're applying for visa, you might not need that, but for residence permit, you might need that. So in case you might want to go for the temporary residence permit directly, so you need to check with the VFS to know what are the documents needed so that you get them ready. Because in the case of you applying for residence permit from your country before coming to Lithuania, you will have to, uh, it's going to take longer actually and the fees are going to be higher because you are going to pay the fees for processing your residence permit you know and also extra fees which might be attributed to the whole process very important so you get in contact with your VFS office in charge or the one which you selected and they will inform you on what you need to produce so they can collect your documents forward them to the immigration office, whether it's in Kaunas or Venus or Mariam Pole, and then they'll review it. And if it's if, if the document is produced, they send it back to the VFS to send it back to you. So in that kind of situation, you'll be traveling from your country to Lithuania already with your residence permit. In other cases, you might be granted a three months visa so that you can just come over to Lithuania within which that period you will get the residence permit. And uh, once you get that, it replaces your visa. But for those applying for national visa, it's still okay. You, you, when you get the visa, you need to come over to Lithuania and apply for the temporary residence permit, which is generally abbreviated as TRP. 
is actually a very important document that gives you the right to work. That gives you a personal number, the number that identifies you in the whole of the Schengen and European Union. Okay, so that is going to be the next and last thing which we will talk about and is a very important phase. So stay tuned. So for those who applied for the national visa, let's just say congratulations, your visa was granted. Fine. So now you are now in the process of traveling over to Lithuania. So what do you need to do? You need to get your stuff ready, buy some of your things, you know, in case you're coming prior to winter, you need to get some thick, thick, thick things, you know, to protect yourself. The win winter is not a joke, please. Don't try it. You're going to freeze. So get your things ready, get some cooking utensils. You can get some light pots. In case you're staying in a student dormitory, get make sure your cooking utensils like the pot or frying pan they are they can be used for on the electric cooker check make sure they they have induction mode no induction cannot work there so take note in case you might want to buy it over here it's still okay you can get over and buy in any, any of the supermarkets whether in Sil maxima or explos market or lidl or Iki, any of them they have these things there you check them out you can get your clothes, you know, jeans, your shoes, still cool. And uh, most importantly, make sure you clean your system before coming over. This one now goes to my Africans, particularly Cameroonians. Other Africans may, may understand, they may have different ways of doing it, but to my Cameroonians, you, you, you guys know, um, these uh, mixtures for malaria that combination of uh, lemon purple leaf purple tree roots uh, mango leaf uh, pineapple uh, bark the peeling of pine pineapple right you know those mixtures for malaria that you mix and cook oh my god please around the uh, around 10 days before your departure right make sure that mixture is cooked 10 days to your departure make sure you cook that mixture cover it up you must not be sick or cover it like how you cover when you have malaria cover it up open you know let that heat get to you do it at least twice a day 10 days to your departure please don't joke with this clean yourself then get some and be drinking. Wash your system out. I don't want to talk much. Just clean you before coming. Don't come here and fall sick. You might hear you you, you might have been hearing how most people get over here from Africa and some few periods, you know, they they are sick, some some even die. It's about it, it's because they neglected themselves, you know. Your system is coming over to a new zone to start getting to new food and things like that. You will face complications. So when coming over, wash yourself out. Clean yourself thoroughly. Also, the purpose of, of you of doing that is to also get yourself ready for COVID tests, especially Cameroonians. I know that before you leave the country, you need to do PCR. And I, I also heard it's now paid 30,000 francs. So before you go for that PCR test, clean yourself well, cover that thing, let it hit you. So 72 hours before your departure, go for your test and it will be negative, no problem. Then print the result and move to the airport and travel. Now, for the people who apply for the national visa before coming, you need to get one document with you. The document is the non-conviction. Now, there, has, there is this thing called the 90, 1961 uh, Convention. I don't know what it is about, but there are a group of countries which signed this document with Lithuania. They are signatories to this convention. 
and uh, these countries they tend to enjoy some benefits i don't know but i don't know the other benefits but one of them is is that nationals that is people from this country when coming to lithuania like for work or studies their non-conviction is legalized only one time and the legalization is done only at the level of their country a good example is india india is a signatory to this convention so as a student coming from india once your uh, non-conviction has been done in your country and legalized in the ministry of your country and then you bring it over you don't need to legalize it again in lithuania the reason is because the country India is a signatory to that convention. But other countries which are not signatories to that convention, they need to legalize their non conviction in their country. And then when they get over to Lithuania, they also legalize it again. That's double legalization for people from countries which are not signatory to that convention. So um, you, you might want to check online the 1961 convention with Lithuania to check. You will see a, a bunch of countries there who signed that. I think the list expands every, I don't know, like countries are gradually signing it and stuff like that. But the countries that I know who have not signed it, Cameroon, Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, these four I know very well. So if you're coming from these four countries, you must legalize it in your country. One, travel with it and come over. When you're here, you go to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Vilnius, in Lithuania. There's a legalization department there. You go there and legalize it again. It is only after it has been legalized the second time that you can go to the immigration department to submit as a document. I'm saying so because it is a problem a lot of people are facing who come, you know, a lot of international students are facing a lot of a lot of them. Most of them travel from their country without the document legalized. So when they get over here and then they'll try to go and legalize it in Venus. The person in charge of legalization tells them that this document needs to be legalized in your country first. So there's nothing you can do. You just need to start thinking of how probably to send the documents back for it to be legalized and then it will be sent back to you. Or maybe they have to do another one back home and send to you. So that's extra money, extra cost, which you need to avoid by doing these findings and then getting ready before coming very very important please a lot of them i've met with uh, students here who are going through that i met a guy from kenya he told me that he did not know he came over and realized that it needs to be legalized in his country before coming so now uh he needs to send his fingerprints back to kenya reason is that it, to legalize a document like that, your fingerprints are needed, your thumbprints are needed. Imagine that. So all the expenditure, you know. So avoid that. Get ready before you come over. That particular document, uh, non-conviction. You, you might call it police report in your country. It, it's all the same thing. It serves the same purpose to show that you have not been locked up. You know, you have not been convicted of a crime. You know, so. Check the 1961, 1961 Convention to Lithuania to see the countries that are, are signatories to it. So if your country is not a signatory, then know that uh, you are legalizing twice. So the, the, the summarization of uh, the summary of this thing is whether your country is a signatory or not, the no conviction must be legalized in your country and brought over. If your country is a signatory, once it's been legalized in your country and brought over, you don't need to legalize it. If your country is not a signatory, once it's been legalized in your country and brought over, you legalize again. Okay, so that's it. So now let's talk about the requirements for uh, the 
for submitting an application for TRP in the migration in Lithuania. So if you came into Lithuania with a student visa, you have one year of, uh, period to apply for your residence permit, temporary residence permit. So you need to get your documents ready so that uh, you can submit your application to the nearest migration office in uh, Lithuania. So what are the documents that you need? The first one is obviously your passport, which you need to you know, keep very secure. The second document is a uh, mediation number again. This time, the school in which you're studying will have to issue you another mediation uh, number. This time, it's going to be valid for about five months. Yeah, you know, so you just need to fill the number when applying for your TRP. So the long number. The next is uh, a bank statement. So if you use your sponsor's bank statement while coming, uh, I recommend you use the same sponsor's bank statement to show that he's actually going to be the one to sponsor you. So in terms of the bank statement thing, the Lithuanian migration states that you can use your sponsor's bank statement and affidavit of support, or you can use your sponsor's employment contract and a feed and video support. If you're using this employment contract, it must be accompanied by copies of pay slips, recent pay slips. So that case is best when your sponsor is like a permanent citizen. He has permanent residence in any of the Schengen states and has a good job that pays well. You can use his employment contract. So your sponsor can send his employment contract to you with the affidavit and the pay slips. In, in, in that kind of situation, make sure that the employment contract and the pay slips are translated to Lithuanian language. Please make sure. But if you're if you're using the sponsor's bank statement, they, they can be in English. No, no translation needed. If you're using the employment contract and the pay slip thing, whether it's in English or another language, make sure it is translated to Lithuanian language. There are a lot of translation companies around. You can go there, show them, they'll calculate the cost and then ask you when you need it. You know, it's easy. A lot. Take note of that. So that is it for bank statement. You need the health insurance. So the health insurance you bought while applying for visa, you might likely have to buy another one that will have to cover you for at least one year from the day you are applying for that TRP. So, if for example, you landed in Lithuania in May and then you are applying for, um, let, let me put it, let me make a good example. Let's say your health insurance for studies in Lithuania, the one you bought when applying for visa, states that it will cover you from the 1st of June to 1st of June next year, 2024. Let's just assume that's one year, right? Now, then you landed in Lithuania in May, and then you went to apply for your residence permit maybe in July. Or let's say in August right now your health insurance the one you bought is no longer valid for one year again because the moment you are applying for that residence permit is August but the health insurance was valid as from 1st June so 1st June first to 1st July that's already one month to August is already two months so your health insurance that you bought is now valid for 10 months so you need to buy probably another health insurance for for maybe one year or if if the insurance company can sell for three or four months or so for, for some few months to make up for the extra months that you have lost. That is the law. That is the law. I hope you try to understand that. If you don't understand, you can rewind and watch again, please. 
That's why I had to make that example. So your insurance should be valid for at least one year from the period that you're applying for the residence permit. That's the idea. That's it. And then uh, you need an accommodation document. So this time you are now in Lithuania. So since if you're staying in the dormitory, the school dormitory, the school will provide you with an accommodation document. So that's not a problem. You need to just contact them and request and they'll ask you to come and pick it up. Then uh, you also need uh, the non-conviction. I think I already talked about that and I hope it's clear. And then lastly, you need the, 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 the fees. So there are two modes. There is a general mode, which is uh, 60 euros now. And then there's an urgent mode, which is about 240 euros. So general mode takes um, two months. The urgent mode takes 30 days, that's one month. So it's up to you which mode you want to go in for, depending on your finances. So. These are the documents which you need. Make sure you buy them and make sure they are clearly and also authentic. You know, and like I said, don't use fake documents. Avoid fake documents. Because even if you're not caught, if you're not caught at the moment, you might be caught later. And when you're caught in a later date, trust me, the repercussions are heavier when you're caught later than when you're caught at that, at that moment. Okay? So this is what I have for you. This video is very long. It's about one one hour so it carries everything it carries everything it also carries the updates as far as the immigration requirements are concerned if you are going to use your bank statement make sure you have at least 5400 euros as a student as a graduate you need to have at least 10,000 and 10,500 euros to in, as a graduate in Lithuania, in a, from a Lithuanian state university, you know, so that is for people who want to use their bank statement actually. If not, then you can use your sponsors and uh, that will be fine. Okay, so thank you guys for watching and uh, please kindly subscribe. And if you have any question, please just comment below and I'll, I'm always there to respond to comments okay so thank you and goodbye for now